talking with Chris Thomas, policy and reform minister. And while I had you, we did a series of interviews. One to talk about is just freedom of information. Mm -hmm. the, the, this took a long time arriving in the Isle of Man, and it's in I place. Even, I even got the Oxford English Dictionary for describing it on the Ilium Dow lecture as trader Lear approach to freedom of information, because we were only 250 years later than Sweden. <laughs> so there you go. You're the champion of this thing. You, you, you got the whole thing through. I, I, just an overview, first of all. How do you think it's going and operating? I think it's very, very helpful. I think uh, in the last uh, 12 months or so, the media have used it more and more. We've noticed that. Um, I think uh, at the start there was a worry that certain people weren't quite understanding what they could use it for and couldn't use it for. Well, you had a couple of people that doubt going yeah. health leather, didn't you? Yeah. Just constantly asking yeah. questions. And, and you, uh, you mentioned uh, that they can't keep doing that anymore. So Yeah, well, yeah, the, law, the meaning of the law is becoming clearer. Government systems have evolved to deal with um, people. Um, we've got uh, we've got an information commissioner who oversees us and in the same way that the information commissioner oversees us for data protection issues, freedom of information decisions are also potentially overviewed by the information commissioner and that's all very helpful and that's another office that I've championed in the last few years so we're moving towards a more mature information commissioner regime so at the moment it's a person um, in the future we'll have legislation to make that person into a statutory body. What changes has it made to people? Sorry, I mean, you know, have there been big things that have come out, game-changing sort of well, responses? I, you know? I think so. The biggest change is that, uh, is that I think there's now an acceptance that in, in the public service that transparency and openness is the best way. So we, we go about the way that we do our business slightly better because we know what's exempt. You know, things when, when we're forming politicians, when we're forming um, debates, I think, but for instance, we've talked before about my negotiations with Mr. Plenderleith and you know, I, I would start that sort of meeting to make sure he's aware that things might come out subsequently in freedom of information. They won't in those mm. sorts of negotiations, but I just want to make sure that when you, when you were, enter into the world of politics and budgets and regulatory agreements, you are entering into a world that's covered by freedom of information. And we've all had to adapt our behaviour, and I think the way to deal with it is to have a culture of, um, of openness. Well, I mean, I've, been, I've talked to people, uh, and they, they're really worried that they can't do things now because they know that there's a potential that it'll come up oh, as of information, you know, but they're, before they'd give that contract out quite quietly or whatever. Oh, okay. Well, we think, I mean, but, but that's, for always there for. that's for the good, that, that's good. I mean, we, we, freedom of information encourages proper record keeping and proper decision making. Data protection is also important, which is another parallel piece of legislation because it's important that everybody protects people's personal data. Mm. So, um, you know, from time to time, people's personal data does get um, breached by public service. Well, I can well, think of an incident. Oh, no, I will say, I, I, I put uh, one into uh, Batman's radio. Uh, the first response was, we're not going to answer it. So said, I want to come to that in a sense, because mm -hmm. that seems to be that the first response quite often is, we don't, we, it's outside the agreement. Mm -hmm. Then you have to go through the process. Like. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there was a data breach with me, because I, when I did that, it went off to every local authority mm -hmm. in the island. So I think that was the first time the complaint system had been used through the thing. We apologised to you, as I remember it, last summer. And... Um, we uh, immediately referred the incident to the information commissioner. Did anyone get ticking off? Or uh, as far as I know, as far as I know, we um, correction yeah. procedures. Were it was a computer error, change of software, fair, and, we, and we, yeah. we apologised to you, and uh, no action was taken. I can put that on the public record if you don't mind. No, no, sure. um, you know, it must be quite frustrating as the complainant because you know you might want to get thanks and recognition for the fact that you were the complainant, and all complainants are like that in social work. But that doesn't happen because it's in the public good that you made that complaint. Your data has been uh, needs to be protected. You've you know. Uh, something went wrong, an apology was given. I mean, do you end up filing yourself for anything? I mean, you know, yeah. the, so the government takes money from one department to another because they've, they've, they've yeah, breached their data. The law applies, the law applies equally to, to you, na independent of the nature of the organisation. And what about filing this information out? I, I ask that because um, initially everything was up there mm -hmm. on the website. I mean, you've got the government of uh, departments, but you also got the series like the mm -hmm. uh, uh, Flower in Laxey or Max yeah. Radio and those sort of things and some now don't have to do it. Yeah. Can you explain why they don't have to publish anymore when they were publishing it initially? Mm -hmm. They, they, they've gone it's off their, the system. It's their, it's, you know, it's their choice. So we have a system which now is a searchable database and it's uploaded automatically because, because we're trying to be as smart as possible to minimise the use of public revenue. So we have a system that automatically updates that applies to government um, to government itself. But we haven't brought... We, we, we gave the chance to some other bodies to be involved, but most of those bodies just chose not to be involved Does in that system. Does that mean they get a duplication? Because no-one can check what's already well, been asked. So be, someone could be asked... So Max Radio is in a similar position to some of the local authorities now, for instance, and several of the local authorities have very good 
um, indexing systems. Uh, Hong Kong Commissioners has all of the Freedom of Information responses up there on its web page. I think Port Erin does. Max Radio, as I understand it, has chosen not to. Well, that's a good example because initially they, there was a terrible one about their party, wasn't there? That, and they, that went public and you know, because okay. it was on the website. Now, if someone asked that same question or, or another similar question, it wouldn't necessarily yeah. get into public domain, would it? And that's certainly Are one. You worried um, about that? Certainly one um, one consideration. It's actually a personal request for information for Freedom of Information, but the way I see it, it would be better to then make it public. So in government, we've taken that ethos on board and we have a policy of transparency and openness. So shouldn't so everyone do it then? Well, can you the make them do it? No, the law doesn't require them to do it, but right. you know, it's, it, perhaps we could revisit that in the law. And certainly in the code of good practice, I think that's definitely already signaled mm. that surely it makes sense to actually publish this information to manage your FOI so that you wouldn't have to keep answering I can give you a good example question. because when I got rejected, I, mm. only went, I went back on the appeal saying, well, you've already answered that question, mm. which was very similar. On yeah. the, well, you know, not the not same question, but yeah. the same sort of information. But, yeah. and, and surely you need that sort of information yeah. to get your information. Yeah. Actually, a lot of information is in there. But, you know. but there's another issue in all of this, Paul, because you're not doing this for, um, you know, for Paul versus Max Radio or anything. I know you're no, doing no, it no. in the public interest. And the other public interest issue is the extent to which Max Radio, given that there are private uh, competitors to Max Radio in one sense, should be involved more in the, in the information giving out business than other people. So you know, this, is, this is very much a live issue in, in okay. across and also with us. You know, we've now got the Steam Packet, I've absolutely insisted that the Steam Packet is an arms length organisation. We're going to have to define what arms length organisation is in terms of freedom of information. And the way we'll probably do that is we'll probably have a culture of complete transparency from the Steam Packet about what is public information. <laughs> and then we've got to make up our minds about exactly how it's But they won't have to publish it either, well, will they, as it stands, because they're not government. The, uh, well, they might, you know. So uh, um, okay. Cal CalMAC, the equivalent in Scotland, is inside the UK freedom of information regime. So that decision still got to be um, still got to be made okay. but I just wanted to, you to accept that mm -hmm. there are issues so at, you know I'm chair of culture Vanin. every penny we get from Treasury it, fine we should just justify in the freedom of information world exactly how we spent it but we're just one charity that's doing things yeah. for culture that compared to other charities so we're not actually included in it because we're a charity ultimately so for Peter for people watching this who have done one or think about doing one you, they should have faith in the system I you, believe you so. the it. systems the systems maturing the system will have continued to evolve as it has evolved in the past and I hope it's helpful, but we've got to get the balance, balance in all sorts of ways, and the balances are to do with the ability to protect your own private personal data versus the public interest, but also between the different nature of organisations. And I'm absolutely sure that it's in the public interest for Manx Radio, the Steam Packet, and the companies that are owned by government at arm's length for, 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 for justifiable reasons are probably less involved in the regime than when we're actually spending public revenue. So it's quite, you know, Max Radio gets a public subvention and it's absolutely clear that what ex that money is spent on should be in the regime, but that's not, not necessarily the same as knowing, knowing everything that they've done with their commercial income because then it's... Indeed, well that's, that would obviously clearly not be uh, yeah. covered by the thing. Very helpful interview, thank you very much for, you know, because these are really dry subjects, Paul, but it is important that we reflect from time to time on things like information and statistics and it's just as boring for me to talk with you about them. Yeah, no, 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 sorry. This is our public service sort oh, of right. uh, <laughs> thing. We do. So thank you very much. <laughs>